Good afternoon and welcome back to Asgard and welcome to another tutorial. Um, this is what I've been actually meaning to do for the last couple weeks, but we've been busy with like new server plays starting and of course the holidays before that and it's just been uh, you know a lot of a, a lot of catching up. So I do apologize. I meant to have this out sooner for you guys. Um, but anyways, we are going to be automating start to finish minus the farming step because of course you put down an ender io farmer and actually additions farmer um with canola seeds and profit but we're going to actually automate the oil creation um steps one two three and four um in order and um show you guys how to automate that very very simply pretty much just using actually additions itself um and then in addition um, some kind of conduits um, to move items and fluids around, we're going to be using Ender I.O. conduits, but you could use other things, um, whatever tickles your fancy as far as that goes. And then also we're going to use a little bit of RF tools as well um, and some extra utilities. So all fairly common mods for um, pretty much any mod pack, I should think, um, at least for the most part. So um, anyways, of course, the first step that you're going to need to do is set down a canola press, give it some power and throw your canola into there and it's going to start creating your canola oil. So that is step one. Very, very easy. Um, and then, of course, you can um, then send it into your oil generators um, if you so desire, and that's going to produce power. Now, if you want to upgrade it once again, um, which I would suggest you do, there's no real reason to ever just run canola oil, throw down a fermenting barrel. This one does not require power, and it's going to accept liquid and change it into oil. It's going to change that canola oil into oil. Um, and this doesn't require any kind of conduits. Um, if you put the fermenting barrel directly next to the canola press, it is going to automatically take in that liquid and start um, changing it over to oil. And that's step two. So, of course, that oil you can then feed into an oil generator if you want and produce power with that. So that's steps one and two for your tier one and your two, two, tier two oil. Pretty self-explanatory. Those are fairly easy to set up. Now, next up... Um, Tiers 3 and 4 are a little bit more in-depth. There's a little bit more involved with those. So what we're going to do is, first off, let's go ahead and automate changing our canola seeds over into crystallized canola seeds because we're going to need that to then imp uh, crystallize the oil. So there's a couple things that you're going to need. First off, you're going to need an atomic reconstructor from Actually Additions. And, of course, you're going to have to give it some power. And then what I would suggest you do is just grab yourself a redstone torch and right click it to pulse. And that way when it's set to pulse, it's not going to run unless it receives a redstone pulse, which is great. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to put a wooden pressure plate right there in front of it. Um, and so that way anytime that something touches that wooden pressure plate, including items, it's going to emit a burst. And so of course, whenever you drop canola seeds onto that, it's gonna change them over into crystallized canola, which is what we're wanting for the, the third tier. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a vacuum chest, and there's some other options, you know, any, basically any kind of item collector that you can filter. And we're going to go ahead and throw a filter into this and say you can only pick up crystallized canola seeds. And then let's go ahead and just drop the range down to one so that it only covers this small area so we don't have any pesky like, oh, throw down my items and it's grabbing them from across the room. Um, really, it only needs to um, have anything to do with this wooden pressure plate. And then what we're going to do is we're going, I'm going to use that as just a, a building block. We're going to set up an automatic precision dropper just right here pointing down. And basically what this does is this drops items. So if I was to take and throw in some canola seeds, you'll notice that they start dropping down at one at a time and they're changing over. Because the nice thing is this redstone signal is affecting this precision dropper. So if there's an item on there, it stops. So you're only having to deal with one canola at a time, which is of course great. And you'll notice that these canola are getting picked up by the vacuum chest. Perfect. That's what we want to happen. And another thing that I would suggest that you do, set your storage up fairly close to the precision dropper. Um, we're going to do it right here. And so, for example, we're going to throw crystallized canola into this. And then we're going to grab ourselves an inventory checker. And, of course, you can set these up however you want to. But basically, the inventory checker is going to check a slot. And we're going to say it's slot 1. And, of course, these drawers only have one slot. So... Um, that's not a big issue. And we're going to say crystallized canola. And we're going to say, and actually let me show you, if you were to, and you could use item, con, I mean uh, redstone conduits or something, if you wanted this to be a little bit 
you know, laid out a little bit different. But you'll notice that this emits a power of 15 because this has more than one crystallized canola seed in there. However, if I change this to say 800, you'll notice that it stops emitting a signal. So depending on, you can basically set a threshold of how many crystallized canola that you want there to be in there. We're gonna say 20. I notice there's no power coming through this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna circle around and this is still set to deactivation mode. So anytime that it receives a redstone signal, either from the pressure plate or from the redstone line, it's gonna shut off. So um, let's say for example, I threw some canola in there. <clears throat> it's gonna start running through that. But as soon as I deposit that canola in there, you'll notice that it stops because it's receiving a redstone signal from that inventory checker. So now our crystallized canola is um, automated and um, we have a way that it's gonna shut off after it reaches a certain point because we don't want it to maybe fill up this drawer and then just keep making crystallized canola seed and them just getting backed up in the vacuum chest and backed up on the pressure plate. It would just be bad. So I would suggest that you do that. And just a heads up, I'm not going to be plugging all this up because it's really basic to do. Um, of course, liquid is going to go anywhere where we're moving liquid. So, for example, we're going to be using oil in a second. You would just run your conduit over to the fluid placer. Um, your items would go into the precision droppers. Um, because I kind of want the area clean if we try to build it all together. Um, of course, sometimes with all the machines we're going to be setting up, of course, sometimes it gets kind of convoluted to look at. So um, I think plugging up item conduits between one thing to the next is um, fairly straightforward. So anyways, for the next step, what you're going to need is you're going to need a fluid placer, fluid collector, a sequencer from RF Tools, a scanner from Extra Utilities 2, and an automatic precision dropper. That's really all you need, as well as just some redstone conduit. Um, you know, you can use anything that can transmit a redstone signal, um, but I do like the insulated redstone conduits personally. Uh, that's just me. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to place down our fluid placer on one side and a fluid collector on the other. I mean, you could set it next to each other. It doesn't really matter. Um, but fluid placer and fluid collector down. And then we're also going to put down an automatic precision dropper. Now the name is kind of misleading because this thing can drop down, but it can also drop up or to the side. It doesn't matter. So we're going to put it right there so that it throws its items upwards. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put down two extra utility scanners facing towards the center. And honestly, this is the exact same setup that we're going to use for um, the next oil step as well. It's very, very, very simple setup. So what we're going to do is we are going to set up our fluid placer and we're basically just going to, let me grab, um, let me grab a couple conduits here. We are going to move liquid from, you know, our oil back there. We're going to move our oil into this fluid placer. And this thing doesn't require any kind of redstone because it's only going to try to place oil when there's no oil in front of it. So it's not really a major issue. Um, you know, but right now this uh, fluid collector is collecting the oil, which is a problem. So we're going to go ahead and right click that with a redstone torch and set it to redstone mode pulse because we don't want it just always collecting oil. And we're going to go ahead and set the precision dropper to pulse as well. That way they're not automatically throwing out items when they don't need to and so on. So now you'll notice that the oil is not going anywhere. It's getting dropped one time and the fluid collector is not picking it up, which is how we want it to be. And then these scanners from Extra Utilities are really, really nifty. We're gonna go ahead and say, you're gonna detect current block, and you'll notice that it automatically detects that there's oil, which is great, that's what we want. And if there's oil there, basically what we wanna do is we want it to send a redstone signal, because what the, what the scanner does is it will allow you to detect certain blocks in front of it, and then emit a redstone signal when that block is present. So we're just gonna run some redstone conduit down here and you'll notice that it's going to activate a redstone signal and it's gonna try to connect into, or no, it's not actually going to. I didn't know, I couldn't remember if it automatically tried to connect into the precision dropper, but we don't want it to. Regardless, we do not want it to connect into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a sequencer from RF tools and we're gonna go ahead and rotate this and have it, um, you know, the input side, we want it to be the scanner and what you can do with the sequencer is um, you can actually set things up to pulse um, when they're receiving a redstone signal. Because the actually addition stuff, if I was to just give this a redstone signal, it would only work when it initially got the redstone signal and then it would 
would not even, it would just totally not even pay attention to the redstone signal because everything in actually additions similar to RF tools is based on pulses instead of a constant signal. So um, what we'll want to do is set up the sequencer and we're going to adjust it here and you'll notice there's a lot of different options and we're going to go ahead and set it to loop four. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to loop the cycle when there's a redstone signal and then it's going to restart when there's no signal. And so then we'll go ahead and we can just set up a sequence. So any of these that are white means that a redstone pulse is going to be emitted. And each of these boxes represent a tick. So, you know, you can really set this up however, as long as you have something that loops. I mean, you could set it up with just one um, signal. And as long as you have something that loops through, that's fine. You know, it's not, it's not going to be an issue. Um, because basically you don't want this to get a signal. Like, for example... Um, what will happen is if your precision dropper, um, if the scanner says, hey, there's oil and gives a signal to the precision dropper, but at that moment, the precision dropper is out of, say, crystallized seeds, um, it's going to not be able to throw out a seed, of course, because it has nothing. And then whenever it receives a seed, it's still got that same redstone signal, so it's not receiving a pulse, so it will not throw out any items. So you do want to make sure that this is receiving a pulse whenever... Um, you know, a redstone signal is present, even if it doesn't have items at the moment. So then what we'll do is we can um, use the sequencer. Like I said, you can just set it to one. I like to do something like this, personally. Um, so that way, as soon as this does get items, I mean, it's like, what, seven, seven, eight ticks before, you know, it finally realizes, okay, I have items and I can throw this item. So, um, but you can just do it however you prefer, really. And we're going to go ahead and say, you know, don't connect to this stuff. You can, you can set your redstone up however you prefer. But basically, we just want it to link back um, into this block. So we'll go ahead and break off that signal, connect it. And so now you'll notice that this redstone conduit is pulsing. And so it's sending that pulse to the precision dropper. And so then what we need to do is let's go ahead and give this one canola. Whoops, not that canola. Ah, uh, I don't actually need this. Yeah, I do, actually. Um, let's go ahead and give this one crystallized canola seed. You notice know, it throws it in there, and now the redstone signal kicks off because there is no longer oil detected um, in this area. So then what we're going to do is set up this scanner. We're going to say set to current block, and you're going to say that it's crystallized oil, which is what we want it to detect. And so then what we're going to do is set up pretty much the same thing over here. And, I mean, actually, we could... Just do that if we wanted to. And we're going to do this one the same way, loop four, and just set up a loop for the redstone. And then we're just going to, we're going to bring it around, and it's going to plug into this fluid collector. And so if we were to hit that, you'll notice that it collected that crystallized oil. And then the redstone kicked off, and there's oil again. This is clicking, but of course this doesn't have anything to give it. So then... What we'd want to do is we'd want to actually plug in our um, crystallized canola seeds from here and plug them into our automatic precision dropper. So I'm going to use the creative chest, I'm going to set it up to this, and then just plug up my item conduits. So we'll say insert, extract always active, and you'll notice that this starts mass producing that oil for us, which is great. And if I was to break off this line, it'll get oil. Well. This has uh, seeds in there. But like for here, for example, the reason we want this crystallized oil scanner is because right now, if this, if this thing wasn't scanning, if it was just emitting a constant signal from the sequencer, so if we were to break this off, plug it in like that, you'll notice it's a constant signal. And if I was to empty out this um, fluid collector, so let's say, and I guess the creative drum can't receive um, liquid. So anyways, you'll notice that this empties out. And then, if this has space, you'll notice that it doesn't collect anything. Even though this is saying, hey, pick that oil up. This is not getting a pulse, so it's not collecting anything. And that is why you have to have this sequencer set up. So, um, and it's the same way down here, and it's the same way in our um, upcoming setup for the, for the um, empowered oil. You have to have that set up to sequence. So, but anyways, now it's producing this stuff and building up crystallized oil um, in the system. So, very, very easy. 
So let's move on to, that's that's all of tier three, by the way. This is producing that crystallized oil. If you just want the tier three oil, you can then pump this directly into your oil generator. And then for the next step, we're going to need to empower our crystallized canola. So um, basically, I'm not gonna go over how the empowerer works. You know, it's fairly, fairly standard, but we're gonna set up our empowerer and our display stands just like so. And of course these display stands require power. The empowerer itself does not. So I'm just going to give them um, creative capacitors. You could run power over them however you so desired. So we're going to need to move both canola seeds and crystallized canola seeds over to the empowerer. Um, you can do that however you so desire. Generally what I do is I have a buffer from the farm um, that has canola seeds and I'll say um, round robin on the conduits and I'll say send you know part of them to this precision dropper and part of them to this. And I'll do the same with the crystallized canola seeds. I'll say send part of them um, to this precision dropper and part of them to the empowerer. So um, it's really just how you wanna do it. Um, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go over all of that too, too much. But basically what we would do is we would have these come in and you could use, you know, different channels or you could filter um, for the different seeds. It doesn't matter. Basically you want canola seeds to go to the display stands and crystallized canola to go to the empower. So for us, we're just gonna set up a creative chest because we get to play in the creative mode. I have done this in my um, Hermit Pack series though as well. We'll put crystallized canola into this. It'll go into the empower. And then we're going to do the same over here. But like I said, if you just wanted one conduit line, you could either use different channels, different channel colors, or you could use filters on this stuff. Um, you know, to dictate where which canola seed goes. It's really just up to you. I like to have generally one conduit line. You can also run this from the bottom if you so desire, um, you know, to have your conduits out of sight. Um, that is an option as well. They will accept items from the bottom or the top or the sides. So that is not a problem. And we'll go ahead and set up our creative chest. Say extract and we'll throw in canola seeds. And so you'll notice that this is empowering. And then all you have to do is you can set up a separate you can say you can only extract on the brown channel, always active, and then we could run this to, um, you know, say a, a buffer or whatever you so desired um, for that. And so there we go. That's running. It's automatically putting those items there, and um, that empowered canola seed is going to wherever you uh, specify it to go. So now we have our empowered canola seeds being created. And like I said, I would suggest that you round robin your seeds. If you don't know how to do that, basically, whenever you say extract, there's a round robin option right here. So round robin's going to, uh, you know, spread those, spread those seeds around. It does work very, very well. And by the way, the empowerer, of course, will only accept one at a time. So if you set it to round robin, it's basically just going to throw a seed in there whenever it needs it because you know this is probably going to go through seeds uh, slightly faster. The empowerer is actually fairly quick um, doing those canola seeds, but um, this still is a little bit faster. So it is going to work out fairly well um, when you have it set to round robin. And by the way, you don't have to worry too much about, like over here we set up something to protect from backup, um, but over here you don't really have to worry about that because when this, say your whatever you know buffer or um, whatever you have, if you just have your fluid pumping straight into oil generators, that's fine too. Whenever those fill up, of course, the fluid collector is going to back up and then it's not going to collect liquid. And so this system is going to stop. And over here, if the empowerer can't move that um, that uh, empowered canola seed anywhere, um, say the buffer is filled, it's just going to keep that empowered canola that it has and it's just going to stop. So you don't have to worry about buffers anywhere except for um, right here. This is the only place that you kind of have to watch um, you know, and make sure and control the drop on that. So anyways, for the last step to actually get our tier four oil and, you know, have it all finished up, we're going to do pretty much the exact same setup, just slightly altered um, over here. So we're gonna set a fluid placer, a fluid collector, a scanner, and another scanner, and then a precision dropper. And so what we're going to do, once again, we're going to set this to pulse mode, on the precision dropper, we're going to set the fluid collector to pulse mode. And then we're going to, um, of course, feed that crystallized oil that we're creating over here. We're going to feed it into this fluid placer. 
So let's go ahead, set up our drum and our item conduits, and let's go ahead and throw some crystallized oil into here. So you'll notice that it drops that oil, and then what we're going to do is let's set up this first scanner, crystallized oil. And if there's crystallized oil, basically what you're going to do is let's set up our sequencer. And like I said, you can have this come directly out of the block. That's fine too. It's really just your personal preference. So we'll put our sequencer right there and we'll run our redstone conduit down, plug it into our precision dropper. And let's go ahead and plug that up. And then of course we'll set our sequencer up to mint and say loop four. And you can also set a delay if you want to, you know, there's a lot of different options. This is just the way that I tend to set it up. I tend to like it like this. And so now this is receiving a signal. And of course it doesn't have any crystallized seeds right now. So what we'll do is we'll have our crystallized canola plugged up over to here into the automatic precision dropper. So of course, just keep in mind, I'm just using creative chess. You can do it however you so desire. And you'll notice that it has changed the liquid to the empowered version. So then you just have to set up your scanner, say empowered oil, and then set up your sequencer once more. Loop four, lay out your sequence however you desire. And then bring your conduit line over to your fluid collector, plug it up, and you'll notice it's collecting the fluid. Very, very nice. And then um, all we have to do is pull the liquid out and send it to wherever we want it to go. So for example, I'm just going to set up a drum right here and you'll notice that it's making empowered oil for us. And then of course that empowered oil, you can then send on over to your generator. And if you wanna see the difference um, as far as power generation with this stuff, if we set up a coal generator here, this is only 40 RF per tick for the canola oil. This is the very, very bare bones setup, which honestly, once again, I don't suggest you do that. I suggest just go ahead and go for the fermenting barrel. It's not that big of a difference as far as price. 40 RF per tick compared to 100 RF per tick. Fairly good difference, I think. Um, and then for the tier three, we have a fairly nice 200 RF per tick. So double what we were getting over there for a very, very easy setup. It's a little bit more... Um, a little bit more costly, but it shouldn't take you too long to get that, you know, get this stuff set up. And then lastly over here we have the tier 4, which is a fairly good jump, I must say. 350 RF per tick. So it is very much worth it, I think. Um, and of course, this stuff tends to actually burn fairly slowly. It only burns like 50 millibuckets at a time, um, and it does burn for a minute You'll notice that this thing shot up in power in no time. Um, but actually, additions, RF tools, extra utilities too, and IO <laughs> is pretty much everything that I've used here. So those are, if you have actually additions in the pack, chances are you probably have um, those other mods present. So um, that's pretty much the way you set it up. So um, if you guys have any questions or anything, do let me know. Um, otherwise... Um, I hope that helped. <laughs> um, I know I've had a lot of questions about it and everything. And like I said, I did it in my Hermit Pack series. You know, I started playing around with it and I was like, well, this isn't, this actually isn't too bad at all to set up. So, I mean, it is way better than this measly 40 RF per tick. So, um, I hope that answered any questions that you guys had. And um, I hope that it helped. And of course, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And I'll try to get those explained for you as best as possible. But I hope that this was clear and... Um, concise for you guys. So anyways, with that, I do believe um, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. So um, until next time, though, as always, do take care and stay safe. And if you guys enjoyed it, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already for more daily videos. And um, yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, stay safe.